Hey, so I'm just getting ready to start sharing a little bit about um, my journey with autoimmune disease. And I know I've kind of picked away at this in the past, but um, it, it really needs to be a different way of looking at things when we start to look at chronic illness, any chronic illness really, but autoimmune disease has become like an epidemic um, and often people aren't even told what they've got is autoimmune or what causes it or whatever. They're just given kind of steroids and straight onto um, biologics and stuff. And, you know, it, it's a difficult path to tread. Um, so the reason I'm starting to share some videos is just over the last year, how much, well, over the last four years, really, but particularly the last year with doing some study around this and some writing and um, some coaching and changing them <laughs> again it's really brought up another layer of stuff and how powerful some of the the work that um I do and many of the practitioners do to to relieve um the symptoms and often the root cause of the disease so my journey with autoimmune disease I suppose it it pretty much started at the age of 17 with um this red eye that seemed to come out of nowhere but when I look back now I can see you know about the age of seven or eight when things were happening in my digestive system that were not good um, and what I was holding and how I managed as a child to you know keep building all these layers of stress and I was I was excellent at, at masking my um issues <laughs> my stress I became really adept at um just looking like you know swan going along the water but actually paddling like shit underneath um and that builds over a period of time that that really builds um until at 17 you end up hit with something else but even prior to that so I had digestive issues I had loads of skin problems um lots of stress um, I had periods of my life where stre stress really affected my behavior and how I showed up at school and what happened to me at school and stuff. So just adding and adding, you know, more and more layers on of stuff. I was painfully, painfully shy to, you know, so scared of expressing myself and my needs. And there's still an element of that, you know, about me. Um, and I've been working a lot with that lately. But knowing now over this last year and recognising some of the places where I I knew that this wasn't good, even at eight, and just completely cracked on with it, didn't tell anyone, you know, just move forward. And that's really been a pattern for me. So after 17, you know, these issues became more and more difficult. Um, and no one had really said at the hospital um, you know, what's your lifestyle like? Um, how do you feel? What's going on for you emotionally, you know? But they used to always say, mm, you're an interesting character at 17 to have all these issues, um, which isn't nice, actually, to be the interesting one in the clinic. <laughs> um, but no one really said, you know, let's have a look at what's going on for you until... I started to work with my then Reiki master who started to talk to me about the stories and the um, the statements, the thoughts, the beliefs that I gave myself. And and that was kind of later on um, after my Reiki training, maybe about 2000, 2002, something like that. So, and since that time, it really set me on a, on a journey. You know, all these magic people started to drop into my lives at my life and, and guide me to the next step um, and I suppose the reason I'm sharing this is you know each time someone comes in to as a client and I hear their story or their journey of you know um, trips to the doctors and messages they've been given and you know it was the same for me it was really the same for me this lack of feeling in control of my own health, having to give it all up, tests, constant trips, taking time off. I had to go to Addenbrooke, so I used to take all day. Um, and then feeling shock, you know, when everything that you'd done and and achieved still was making you worse. And so by the time I reached kind of 
24, I started to look more deeply into it and I managed it, but it wasn't until I reached like 41, <laughs> 42 that um, I got Graves disease. Um, and I'd had a few other autoimmune diseases sat there, but I could manage those, but Graves disease was a real whopper. Um, and I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Um, it's chronic hyperthyroidism. And so your body is in a hyper state, you know, your cortisol is raised, everything is stressed, your adrenaline is up, your digestion is over. I mean, my skin looked great because it was, like, <laughs> but my hair was falling out. I was getting a nervous tick. I was paranoid. You know, it affects absolutely every part of your body. And obviously, because of that, it affects your life and it created rapid change in a lot of my relationships people didn't understand they didn't really want to know and they they didn't want to know or support me and I and I don't blame them to be honest it's a very hard disease to to manage as a person let alone the people you know around you um and it's your own journey so that was the time when I really had to take stock and change my life completely. And that was when I realized, you know, I really hadn't been a happy girl for a long, long time. And I was choosing to be in, you know, a state of um, kind of a non-playing character. You know, life just happens to me and I can't control it. And this is just who I am. This is my illness. And it wasn't true. <laughs> so um, that's really just an overall view of, of what happened over a period of years, way too many years. Um, and I'm in full health now. Obviously, I still deal with those um, symptoms and those issues that were created in my body. I'm still really aware of. But, you know, I work with it a little bit differently now. I'm a bit softer. I'm not quite so rigid and restricted about, you know, the way I eat, what I do. But and it was really, for me, a journey of trust, of trusting my own body, of trusting my own abilities, of trusting my own strength and becoming more resilient to life and making decisions that were more appropriate for me and not going along with the doctor or somebody else's advice. Um, and so this is the kind of work that I offer now. It's it's really, you know, I call it a program, but it's not really, it's just a really deep dive into ways that we can support you to let go of, you know, the things that we're attached to. And so um, I'll be posting a little bit more in a bit more detail and hopefully doing some videos because I seem to be a little bit better <laughs> I'm good at writing but it's time for me to show up a little bit more so um I'll be talking to you a little bit more about the symptoms of autoimmune disease and um and particularly the ones that affected me to see if any of that resonates so um if any of you do have autoimmune or you're struggling with it or you really think like that there's no way out it's it's not true and um, there are ways to support you alongside the medical system as well I'm not saying that that isn't uh, appropriate at all but um time that I started to share a little bit through my voice and not through my pen <laughs> Okay, um, I'm looking forward to hearing from any of you. Please drop a comment or, or drop me a message if you've got any issues with autoimmune. I'd, I'd really love to chat to you, even if it's just to share your experience and understand where you're at. Okay, take care. Lots of love.